story is from Nokia. I have no idea who they paid to write this, uh, but they contributed to Fierce Network November 6th, 2023. All right, so this goes back. This is a throwback, dude. This is one year ago and some change. All right, so fixed wireless taken off big time. Forecasts suggest 165 million homes and businesses will be connected to FWA by 2027, up from 70 million in 2021. 5G has enabled fixed wireless access to truly compete with traditional fixed broadband tech with services in the 100s of megabits per second. All right, so for those of you out there that have fixed wireless access, Verizon 5G home internet, T-Mobile 5G home internet, AT&T internet air, even if you have a regional provider, let me know in the comments in the live chat what type of speeds you get. Because for the most part, from what I've seen from people and what they share with me and report to the channel, most people are getting anywhere between 100 megabits per second downlink and like 700 megabits per second downlink. That's that's like typical range. The only exception is probably going to be the millimeter wave Verizon option for the for the lucky few that have access to it. You're probably seeing gigabit speed down and you're probably getting 100 meg up probably. So yeah, uh, upgrades to the network that create all this capacity. Mobile users typically consume 20 gigs per month. I don't know what you guys are using. I'm sure a lot of you out there on my channel, my viewers, subscribers, supporters typically use more. <laughs> all right, which takes us to the fixed wireless access user. 20x the data of mobile users. So one FWA user is worth 20 mobile users. It says, according to Nokia, mid-band 5G can only support around a 15% FWA take rate in suburban areas before it starts to impact mobile data. Zero cool. You know this industry. You know the engineering piece. You know how the RF works. What do you think about that number? No, I believe it. Mid-band only exactly supporting 15% of the FWA take rate. Well, I think it's a little greater, and here's why. Because you're really taxed. Think about it. It's, it's common math. You take one mobile user has a cell phone, right? You take your FWA. Guess how many devices you can just put on that modem? You know what I mean? Versus just one mobile user. And that's, there you go. So your adoption rate is anywhere between 7 to 1 to 8 to 1, right? Which is a mobile user. And that's why, remember, I just sent you that article, right, a little bit ago this evening about T-Mobile, like, disconnecting with their FWA for time use. Yeah, there you go. That's a case in point. They're taxed. They're feeling it. They're feeling the pinch, you know? When I, when I think about the fixed wireless access user using 20 times the amount of data that a mobile data user uses, how much concern... Do you have personally, right? This is your opinion. Do you have any concern about the wireless networks keeping pace with the FWA demand? Because the mobile user is very easy to predict, right? There is a steady increase in usage over time, but it's predictable and it's consistent. We don't know what's going to happen with FWA. It's it's a new frontier in terms of the scale it's reaching. Line on how people use um, internet. I think those who are fiber to the prim players and internet providers from a traditional standpoint have a little bit of a leg up because they have more data. For example, Verizon's got, you know, what, 20 years worth of uh, data that they can use to kind of provide a baseline for how customers consume data um, in the area of the country that's the, the most populated, which is the Northeast. Um, so they have a good amount or good grasp on what they can expect from a, you know, a user of, of, of fixed wireless. I think uh, at and is in the same spot. If anybody's probably in a precarious situation, it's probably T-Mobile because they don't have that data. Um, they don't own any fiber and they don't have um, anything other than a wireless uh, a wireless uh, product to be able to pitch to consumers. Um, so, I mean, from that standpoint, I think they're probably in the worst shape of the three. But I don't think we're seeing companies drive the boat without having a map. Um, they do have that information as far as, you know, the traditional players, Verizon and AT&T, they've got that information.
a major factor here commonly overlooked for capacity management the relationship between the fwa device in the home and the 5g radio this is something i've i've mentioned on multiple occasions with dennis because dennis would always poo poo on fixed wireless and he'd always talk about how great cable was and you know obviously we can all agree how great fiber is but there's so much upside that's untapped right like there's there's the the 5G advanced features, the software side, the network slicing, all the things that can allow you to better manage the network. And then, of course, there's always going to be more spectrum required, and we expect that to be more available in the future. I think with the new FCC and a better plan moving forward, at least we can have some hope, right, that that's going to happen. I think there's more upside than people are letting on. All right, so things like MIMO technologies, right? The increased higher order MIMO, improved CPs. I think CPs moving outdoors, right? That's going to help with like, you know, obviously like antenna gain and stuff like that. Zero cool. When I think about the engineering side, don't you think every FWA provider should have an outdoor CP unit that can really kick up the gain to really help with uplink and downlink speeds? Okay. So that situation is only going to be useful for right now in a millimeter wave environment <clears throat> okay so pretty much however once we have more millimeter out there that's for example let's think of like an mdu like an apartment right if you have millimeter wave on your roof in the apartment you're not going to need all that crap and the same design needs to be in neighborhoods right so it needs to be like repeaters um there needs to be um Dude, you know, some engineers are pretty down on those repeaters. Their their concern uh, is know. the noise. Yeah, no, I know. They do they do generate noise. They're right. You parabolic wave dishes, right? They need as much edge to edge connectivity as possible. Here's the thing: if you have edge to edge connectivity in millimeter, which we do not have now, we only have on, on a micro and on a small cell based. Okay, if you have an edge to edge, you're not going to need. An outdoor antenna. You do now, because obviously the edge edge is not there yet. The MEC, the edge edge, the cloud compute, permanent wave, it's not there. It's not, you know, across the U.S. yet. But until that, when that happens, um, it's just going to be like, okay, you plug in a modem in your living room, you're good to go. Right? Does that make sense? So Yeah, but some of those CPs ain't that great, man. Like, if I take, for example, well, well, the well, yeah. <laughs> T-Mobile ones, like, have been nothing but problems. Oh, of course. Yeah, some no, of them have freaking yeah. been overheating since they were first oh, released. Sure. I mean, no, there were yeah. some firmware updates helped some things, but seriously, dude, they've been pretty crappy. Oh, I know, yeah. It, this is going to get better with time. 